three years, but this year, I am actually the general manager. If you just want to pay jobs, I've figured out in the last few weeks as the general manager that I've actually already been doing, even though I wasn't the general manager. I think I need a new agent. So, uh, we got a really packed agenda today, so I'll be brief. Um, uh, there is just not enough words to say um, and describe the passion and the commitment Luis Lupita and the Lama Lupita staff have for serving their community. And we watched radio go through a transformation in the last several years where it used to be focused on mass communication and mass communication and how the state the radio station had that were trying to, to feel to as many people as possible. Struggle in the radio stations that have a niche and have a lifestyle and know their community are succeeding and, and getting through the trials and tribulations of the last four or five years. And La Movida is without a doubt a standout uh, demonstration of how important it is to serve your community. There is a saying that goes back generations for Midwest Family uh, Madison, and that is, serve your community well, and you shall profit accordingly. And that puts serving our community in front of everything, and uh, being able to do events like this really allows us to walk the walk, and that slogan is how we live every day at Midwest Family, so I appreciate all of you for coming. Please enjoy the speakers, the awards, the guests, and thank you so much for participating in the luncheon and uh, supporting La Movida. And now, Mario Mendoza. Buenos dias. Uh, no. Buenos dias. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's try it again. Good morning, everybody. All right. We've given it a fair shot. Um, uh, my name is uh, Mario Mendoza. I'm an attorney at uh, Murphy Desmond uh, here in Madison, and it is my pleasure and privilege to be here before you for the 14th year in a row. Um, sure. <laughs> Why not, right? We'd like to thank you for attending uh, this uh, annual Hispanic Heritage Month uh, luncheon celebration hosted by WLMB La Movida, 1480 AM y 94.5 FM. And <laughs> it's become part of the shtick, I know. And, and of course, Midwest uh, Family Madison, without whom there would be no La Movida, at least not at this scale. Uh, today, Monday, October 14th, La Movida is celebrating, check this out, 22 years, 22 years of broadcasting 24-7 as the first and only Spanish radio station in South Central Wisconsin. We do want to first acknowledge our sponsors, without whom the event could not be pulled off, at least not in, at this scale. And I would ask if you could hold your applause until I get through the list of our sponsors. And they are Safe Communities, Madison College, Los Perez Supermarket, UW Madison Community Relations, Centro Hispano, St. Vincent de Paul, Bank of Sun Prairie, SSM Health, A Grace, Carbon World Health, Wisconsin Latino Chamber of Commerce, Rural Mutual Insurance, Gunderson Funeral Home and Cremation, Unity Point Health Meritor, Park Bank, The Little Big Load Laundromat, and Fact, City, Fact TV City of Fitchburg. Please give them a warm round of applause. <laughs> we also want to acknowledge the presence of a number of our uh, special guests, and if you, again, could uh, resist the urge to applaud until we're through the list. We'll get out of here before 3 p.m. <laughs> Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Sara Rodriguez, Jamie Coon, the interim Dane County Executive, 
Satya Rhodes Conway, the mayor of the city of Madison, Janet Figueroa Cole, council president of the city of Madison, Julia Arata Frata, mayor of the city of Fitchburg, Claudia Franco Ijuelos, ambassador of Mexico's uh, consulate in Milwaukee, Shiva Bidar, Latino Health Council co-chair, Michelle Vetterkind, president and CEO of Wisconsin Broadcasters Association, there are a number of other alders uh, from the city of Madison and city of Fitchburg. We acknowledge your presence in general fashion. Uh, Karen uh, menendez Collar, executive director of Centro Hispano of Dane County. Calvin Barrett, Dane County Sheriff. Sean Barnes, uh, chief of the Madison Police Department. Fabiola Hamden, immigration affairs supervisor, Dane County. Jorge Antesana, Wisconsin Latino Chamber of Commerce CEO. Salvador Carranza, President of the Latino Education Council. Oscar Mireles, Poet Laureate and Omega School Director. Uh, Valentina Aedo, Vice President of Academic, Academic Affairs at Madison College. Renee Mo, President and CEO of United Way of Dayton County. Joe Gothard, Superintendent of Madison Metropolitan School District. Brenda Gonzalez, Director of Community Relations at UW-Madison. Patricia Telles Giron, Co-Chair of the Latino Health Council. Nidia Martinez, Executive Director of the Latino Academy of Workforce Development. Diego Benitez, the, from the Office of Congressman Mark Pocan. Teresa Telles Giron, co-chair of Latino Ch Children and Family Council. Virginia Gittens Escudero, uh, executive director of Unidos. Matias Lemos, president of the Latino Professionals Association. Mark Freire, director of Dane County Arts and Cultural Affairs. Steve Maurice, uh, director of the uh, Catholic Multicultural Center. And then we have representatives from all of the following organizations, the Madison Police Department, UW Police, and Amigos en Azul, Fitchburg Police and Fire Departments, the Sun Prairie Police Department, the Wisconsin State Patrol, the uh, Sun Prairie Police Department, as I think I mentioned, and Verona Police Department. Now give them all a warm welcome. <clears throat> This morning, we are beginning our program in a very similar, somewhat regrettable, but similar fashion as we did that last year. And that is uh, to honor and remember one of our leaders who recently passed. We're talking about Lucia Nunez. Lucia Nunez was a leader and an excellent leader across many organizations, Centro Hispano, the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development, the city of Madison, and Madison College. Many of us had the pleasure of working uh, with her, getting to know her, and uh, she, in her many years here at Madison, uh, made a mark, sure, in the organizations in which she worked but she was a mentor to many and a friend to exponentially many more. Let's observe a moment of silence as we remember fondly and lovingly Lucia Nunez. Thank you, thank you. I hope that uh, in the coming days, months, years, uh, we'll be able to celebrate uh, her life because her life was most definitely suitable for celebration. Now, transitioning back to our regularly scheduled programming, uh, it is uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, our Lieutenant Governor, Sara Rodriguez. She uh, started uh, her uh, career as a reproductive health educator in Samoa through the uh, Peace Corps. So clearly a desire to serve and, and help others. She later transitioned uh, to uh, other aspects of healthcare, earning her uh, nursing degree and becoming an emergency room uh, nurse. Um, she also was an intelligence officer with the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, and she's been committed to, throughout this experience in healthcare, 
she's been committed to making improvements in the manner in which healthcare is delivered, particularly communities that don't traditionally uh, have enjoyed uh, great access. In, uh, in uh, 2020, she ran for the uh, Wisconsin Assembly and she has served as our Lieutenant Governor since 2022. So I would ask you to please warmly welcome Lieutenant Governor Sara Rodriguez. Well, thank you so much for that um, introduction. Um, y gracias por la invitación a celebrar con ustedes. Uh, algunos saben que tomé la mejor decisión de mi vida. Me casé con un hombre de México. <laughs> El desde Saltillo, Coahuila. Uh, but, but thank you so much. I'm honored to be here today to highlight and uplift the contributions of our Hispanic and Latino communities and to celebrate the rich history and culture and contributions of Hispanic Americans in shaping Wisconsin. From arts to education to business and public service, Latinos play an essential role in our state. As Wisconsin's fastest growing population, the contributions of Hispanic and Latino Americans can be felt in every corner of our state and communities. They are not only shaping the present, but are the future of Wisconsin. And we must work to increase Latino representation at all levels and prioritize understanding the community's unique needs and concerns. In doing so, we can build a more inclusive and vibrant state that thrives on the diversity and potential of all of our people. As the spouse of an immigrant from Mexico and the mother of two children who we have raised to feel a sense of pride embracing their Mexican heritage, I am committed to bringing the diverse perspectives of Hispanic and Latino communities into policy discussions and governing. From housing to education and entrepreneurship to health care access, Latinos are a critical voice at the table and key in shaping policies that will benefit all Wisconsinites. At a time when some want to divide us, our individual commitment to acknowledge and honor each other to build each other up instead of tear each other down is more important than ever. And this month of celebration is one piece of that. I am grateful for the opportunity to recognize the accomplishments of all here today. You are a living representation of the American story and the kind of progress we need to celebrate more often. Your sacrifices, hard work, and advocacy built a more inclusive and equitable future for all of our children and for future generations. Your achievements and contributions continue to describe, just drive Wisconsin forward and our country forward. And that's what we celebrate today. So in honor of that, let's not only recognize the Hispanic communities and cultures that make our state a great place to live, but also be moved to continue building a state that reflects the values of equity, inclusion, and opportunity for all. Thank you, all of you, for the great work you're doing, and thank you for inviting me to celebrate with you today. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. So, each year, our communities in the greater Madison, although Julia would probably tell, no, it's greater Fitchburg area. <laughs> they, they, uh, in, in recognition of uh, this month of uh, celebration, they all issue proclamations. Uh, and each year, I, I'm told, no, you know, call this person first. No, all, if, if it, the representatives from uh, the city of Madison, the city of Fitchburg, uh, Dane County, and whomever else uh, passed a proclamation can come up here. And then in, a, in the spirit of uh, uh, intergovernmental cooperation, you figure out how you want to deliver that, and I'll, I'll, I'll watch smilingly from the back. <laughs> and yes, if Luis and Lupita could join us. Yeah. So hello everyone, buenos dias a todos. It's an honor for me to be here with you to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, the Mes de la Herencia Hispana. 
it's an honor for me because I am, you know, I am the mayor of the city of Fitchburg, very proud to be the mayor and also be a Latina um, from Argentina. I want to say thank you to Luis and Lupita uh, for organizing this event every year and inviting us to celebrate. And I want to celebrate all of us because the Latino community here in Dane County, we are doing a lot of work. We are contributing to the economy. We are contributing to education, health, and we should be proud of all of our accomplishments. I am very proud of the 4,000 Latinos that live in the city of Fitchburg. And, and I am representing them also as a mayor. So I want to recognize my police department here, uh, Chief Morales and the administration uh, for coming today and to celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, thank you very much. And yes, I, I did a proclamation, and I'm going to read a, a small piece that they say the mayor and the common council uh, of the city of Fitchburg recognize September, uh, rec recognize on September 15th, October 15th, Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Fitchburg and congratulate our Hispanic Latino community on this significant month and thank them for the contribution to the vibrancy of the city of Fitchburg. Thank you. Um, Good morning, everyone. So I'm, I'm Alde Figueroa Co. I work at, with the city of Madison and their current council president, the first Latina council president in the city of Madison. <laughs> so I'm also honored to be here today to celebrate the Hispanic Heritage Month. And again, welcome all of you and thank everyone in the city that has gotten here to support, um, that supports our community every day. So with that said, um, the mayor and I put a proclamation together and it reads as follow. That the mayor and common council recognize the month of September 15, 2024 through October 15, 2024 as Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Madison. And be it further resolved that the mayor and common council congratulate our Hispanic, Latinx, and Latin community on this significant month and thank them for their contributions to the vibrancy of the city of Madison. And it's my pleasure to join you this afternoon. Um, thank you all for being here to celebrate this community. And thanks to Luis and Lupita for everything they do um, to entertain and inform and bring our community together again and again over the years. You guys are a force of nature, and we appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. At this point, we'd like to introduce you and, and welcome to the stage our keynote speaker, and that will be Ambassador Claudia Franco Ijuelos uh, from the uh, Mexico Consulate in Milwaukee. Ambassador Franco Ijuelos is, of course, the head counsel of Mexico in Milwaukee and has been so since April of 2022. Her career as a Mexican diplomat spans over three decades. She has held posts uh, in, through various parts of the world, uh, including Phoenix, uh, British Columbia and Canada, Paris, uh, France, and has had a distinguished career in academia as well. But Without further ado, please welcome Ambassador Claudia Franco Ijuelos. Viva Mexico! Viva! <laughs> Muchas gracias por esa bienvenida tan calurosa. Siempre que vengo a Madison y algún evento con la movida, sé que voy a estar en familia. Así que con ese gusto les digo buenas tardes y gracias por, por tenerme aquí el día de hoy. Sobre todo, muchísimas gracias a Luis y a Lupita Montoto por su invitación. Es, es un honor estar en presencia de la vicegobernadora Rodríguez, de la alcaldesa Satya Rhodes, de Julia Arata, de tantos amigos, eh, Janet Figueroa, eh, que me han ayudado a mí a lo largo del tiempo que he estado aquí en Wisconsin, que ha sido poco, créanme. Yo voy a estar aquí mucho más tiempo si ustedes me dicen. Sí. 
I'm going to speak in English uh, because I wa was requested to do so. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Midwest Family Medicine for this invitation. And uh, I think I want to take this opportunity, a unique opportunity for me, I should say, to share with you a very clear message on this Hispanic Heritage Month. The Hispanic community is key to the prosperity of Wisconsin. We just heard that. To its social fabric, not just to the economy, but to the social makeup of this state. And to its future, of course, provided that its full potential is fulfilled. And I want to, to say it to you that the Consulate of Mexico will lend its support every step of the way to fulfill that potential. Let me start by recalling that the latest US Census shows that seven in 10 Latinos in Wisconsin identify themselves as Mexican. The Consulate of Mexico serves the community since 2016, providing services to first, second, third, fourth generation Mexicans and Mexican Americans who have growing economic strength and influence in Wisconsin. We provide essential documentation services and legal support to Mexican citizens. We contribute to educate the Mexican and Latino community about available health and education resources, the Latine community, or the Latinx community. We promote trade between Wisconsin and Mexico and we promote Mexican cultural traditions. We value our, our collaboration with community organizations, local and state government institutions, because we share the objective to enhance the contribution by Mexicans and Hispanics to Wisconsin. Today, Hispanics are the second largest minority after the African American community at nearly 8% of total population in Wisconsin. Actually, in the last quarter century, total population in Wisconsin would have probably diminished were it not for immigration and growth of the Hispanic community. In addition, Hispanics are younger as a group, 25 years is a median age, compared to 40 years for the general population. So the growth and the relative youth of Hispanics constitute an advantage to Wisconsin's sustained prosperity as long as Hispanics develop to their full potential. Indeed, the Hispanic community invigorates the economy through its work, its spending power, its fiscal contributions, and entrepreneurship. For instance, Hispanic businesses have made strides in Wisconsin. According to a UW Madison study from 1997 to 2012, Latino business ownership nearly tripled. And over the last 10 years across the United States, Latino businesses grew by approximately 34%. However, Wisconsin still lags behind most other states of the union in the number of minority-owned businesses. But resources are available to improve financing, nonprofit accelerators, and to overcome language barriers, which are the most common problems that they confront. Let me give you three examples. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation collaborates with other agencies and nonprofit minority business associations to provide resources and statewide networking opportunities. The Latino, uh, the, pardon, the Wisconsin Latino Chamber of Commerce, and Jorge Antesana, I think, is among us today, contributes to unleash the power of businesses, and a majority of the growing membership of the Wisconsin Latino Chamber of Commerce are women-owned businesses. And your third example, or my third example, the Consulate of Mexico. We offer the Mexicana Emprende program in collaboration with the Thunderbird School of Business and the University of Arizona. 32 women have successfully completed the program to date since last year when it was first implemented. 
Also, keep in mind that Mexico is Wisconsin's second most important trading partner after Canada. So, I would submit to you that this strong economic relationship is fertile ground for more connections. We should increase the number of Latino-owned businesses participating in trade with Mexico. The growth and youth of Hispanics are also an advantage to Wisconsin's manufacturing and agricultural sectors. As you probably know, Wisconsin is number one in the nation for cheese production. America's Dairyland is home to about 6,000 dairy farms, more than in any other state. But perhaps you didn't know that practically all milk produced in the United States, including Wisconsin, comes from farms that employ immigrants. That most of these immigrants are Hispanic, and that approximately half of them are undocumented. Lack of immigration status hurts workers. They are more vulnerable to unsafe, unhealthy working conditions and to abuse. And that's why the Consulate of Mexico educates Hispanic workers about the rights they have regardless of their immigration status. We also work closely with the US Department of Labor the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development, the Dane County Immigration Affairs Office, and organizations like Centro Hispano, UMOS, Voces de la Frontera, to protect the rights of all workers. Now, a clear-eyed vision of the future must necessarily address the education and health of the Hispanic community. In Wisconsin, Hispanic education and health outcomes have improved over time, but they continue to be lower than for the general population. For example, 93% of the adult population in Wisconsin has a high school degree or above. But among Hispanics, almost 30%, or one in three adults, have not yet obtained a high school diploma. Numerous organizations, most of them led by Hispanics, are dedicated to turn dreams into reality through education, training, and community support, while at the same time tapping on Hispanic talent. The Consulate of Mexico works with the Milwaukee Area Technical College to inform the Hispanic community about English as a second language and GED courses digital and financial literacy, as well as online educational opportunities offered by Mexican institutions. Resources are available to Mexican students through consulate programs such as IME Becas and Plazas Comunitarias in collaboration with organizations like the Latino Academy for Workforce Development, Journey House, Casa Guadalupe Education Center, the Whitewater Unified School District, the Beloit State Line Literacy Council, too many to mention. Now, turning to health, the health, need, health needs of the Latino community cannot be understated either. One-fifth of all Hispanics do not have health insurance in, Wins in Wisconsin. That's a lot. One-fifth, 20%, compared to only 6% of the general population. The Consulate of Mexico collaborates with the Wisconsin Health System and various organizations, notably Planned Parenthood and Consejo Latino para la Salud, both organizations headed by Mexican women, to educate and, well, co-headed, no? Uh, Dr. Telles Giron and Shiva Vidar, an honorary Mexican, the other uh, chair. And, and we work to educate about preventive care and screening and to promote access to insurance options and health services. Last year alone, more than 2,000 persons received a vaccine, an eye exam, a glucose test, or a blood pressure test in our premises at the consulate, the majority of them while waiting for their new passport or consular ID. 
And finally, let me mention the power of culture. I would submit to you again that sharing our culture keeps our traditions alive, yes, but it does strengthen the Hispanic community also. Celebrations such as Cinco de Mayo, Mexican Independence Day, Dia de los Muertos, they can and they do foster connections with the community at large, or at least they provide opportunities. We have to seize those and make them opportunities to bridge uh, divides, to communicate, to share stories. Um, also, Hispanics in Wisconsin can take advantage of their bilingualism to open new doors in life, thinking about young people. And I am convinced that the strong cultural background that you may instill in your children can even lead to unsuspected adventure. Let me give you a recent example. The first tour in Italy by the Mariachi Juvenil Grandes Lagos of the Latino Arts Strength Program. They toured Italy. I wouldn't have thought that young Latinos and Latinas from Milwaukee would proudly represent Wisconsin in Italy through Mexican music. <laughs> At the personal level, I think the tour was a life-changing experience for these children and young men and women, thanks to their talent, their perseverance, but also to their strong cultural roots. My dear friends, Mexico's new administration, headed by President Claudia Sheinbaum, has assigned clear priority to the protection and the empowerment of Mexicans abroad. Let there be no doubt that the Consulate of Mexico in Milwaukee, as an institution, will continue to be trustworthy partner to Wisconsin government agencies, organizations, businesses, churches, schools, universities, we share the objective to strengthen the Hispanic community so it may reach its full potential because the Hispanic community is key to the prosperity of Wisconsin, to its social fabric, and to its future. Muchas gracias. for one of the uh, very exciting parts of each year's program, and that is the presentation of recognitions, well-deserved in each instance. We begin today with the uh, Making a Difference Award that goes to Nancy Saiz. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I need to introduce her. You all already know her, but she is a community development specialist for the city of Madison and loved by all. Nancy. Muchas, muchas gracias. I did not expect to speak, but I would not be here without many of you. I've been in this community for a while, for 30 years, and um, we've been through many things. Uh, there's more to go, so the fight continues. I'd like to welcome all my newer folks, my younger people coming up and working in this community. I welcome you, and there's so much work to still do. Muchas gracias, y si se puede. Congratulations, Nancy. The uh, Hispanic Entrepreneur of the Year 
award goes to Nestor and Ashley Rodriguez, owners of Carbon World Health, LLC. Dr. Nestor Rodriguez is a board certified emergency medical physician and uh, medical director of Carbon World Health, originally from El Salvador, uh, was the first in his family to obtain a high school uh, diploma. And uh, he attended Yale University. Uh, he graduated from the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. And after a successful career uh, in, uh, in uh, working a, a, as an emergency room uh, physician, uh, he elected to go into private practice and develop what we now know today as uh, Carbon World Health, uh, which is a, a top cosmetic, anti-aging, and sports medicine um, uh, facility uh, in the country. They're actually respectively 75 years old and <laughs> not quite. Now, of course, uh, Ashley uh, is an, uh, 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 trained as an interventional and computer, uh, computer tomography, tomographer. Uh, she uh, took the bold step of becoming a mompreneur a few years ago uh, and has subsequently uh, become a, an integral part of uh, Carbon World Health uh, as the uh, medical spa uh, director. So without further ado, Nestor and Ashley Rodriguez. Sorry, I have to bring notes on here. So she told me I had 30 minutes, right? And so, and not seven, she's 82, I'm 65, but we look pretty good for that. But, uh, so thank you guys again. Thank you, uh, Luis and Lupita for having us and inviting us and honors this award. But I do wanna thank, we're all Latinos here, so I do wanna thank um, God first for the blessings he's given us, for the abilities, the strength, perseverance to create and, and to kind of further our mission. You know, growing up on welfare in LA, coming from El Salvador, from the Civil War to then another Civil War in South Central LA, uh, we didn't think we would be here. I didn't even know where Wisconsin was, to be honest with you. And when I went to Yale, my mom uh, thought she would tell people that I went to jail. It's a different type of uh, organization. But I got street credit for two days. Um, once they realized I didn't go to jail, it was good. So police officers, thank you. I didn't get involved with you guys uh, in that way. So do want to, again, express gratitude to La Movida, the Midwest Family Madison for honoring us. It's uh, a great privilege. Um, I want to thank my wife and the first time I admitted in public the actual real boss and, and mastermind behind the company and our family. Thank you. Um, we also want to thank our team who's actually working. We, we couldn't get them all because we had too many clients in, in appointments. We couldn't cancel that, but they're the backbone of our success. So this award goes to them also. And then to our clients for trusting us with their health. Um, there's a lot of big hospital organizations here, but they, they trust in our vision that we believe in health, not just to prevent disease, but to make you live life longer so that when you are in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you can still enjoy life, right? Why work hard when then you just go into a nursing home? That's not the, the goal of all this. Um, I want to acknowledge our son, because he's in college, to someday be on stage and be able to give speeches. And then just for everyone else, this award honestly is for everyone here. It's hard, and sometimes we, we do feel the pressures of being Latinos, right, in, in a mostly Caucasian neighborhood environment, uh, but we can do it. Um, we gotta strategize with each other, support each other, help each other, and this is a little bit of what we could accomplish. And like they mentioned earlier, we have to reach that potential. It's not just to say we're around and we're numbers. We gotta do it, and we all can do it for sure. So thank you guys, and have a good lunch. Thank you, Nestor and Ashley. So this year's Believe and Succeed Award goes to Nilson Alejandro Riaño. <laughs> Alejandro is a distinguished uh, journalist and educator and entrepreneur and has been so here in Madison for over 20 years. Uh, originally from uh, Colombia. He used to be a professor at the Universidad Javeriana, Javeriana y la Universidad Central de Bogotá. 
uh, and came to uh, Wisconsin in early 2000 and right away made his mark at WORT, at Voz Latina, at La Movida, and many others. Uh, he launched Mi Wisconsin Latino, which has become a uh, absolutely essential source of information on the web uh, for Latinos. If you want to be informed, uh, you go to Mi Wisconsin Latino. And this year's uh, uh, Believe and Succeed Award goes to Alejandro Riaño. Bueno, primero que todo, gracias a Lupita y a Luis por este eh, sorpresivo regalo, premio. No lo esperaba para serles honesto, pero gracias. Quiero también agradecer a mis, a mis hijas, a mi familia, eh, a Lupita, a Luis, como lo dije antes, a mi jefa que está por acá, a Dr. Daniels, que también ha sido trabajando con nosotros. Como ustedes se pudieron dar cuenta, yo tengo dos trabajos, uno como educador y otro como periodista. Esos son mis dos trabajos. Y hoy estoy aquí como hablando español, perdónenme, pero es que me gusta más la pasión de la palabra. Ustedes saben que se siente. Eh, ante muchos que estamos acá, que básicamente somos personas que somos parte de una comunidad que se puede decir, no es la comunidad hispana, es la comunidad de la esperanza. ¿sí? Porque nosotros, donde estemos, le vamos a colocar siempre la posibilidad de ayudar a los demás. No importa si tiene otro lenguaje, si tiene inglés, si tiene español, somali, lo que sea, siempre vamos a ayudar, porque es nuestra… digamos que Dios nos ha dado esa ventaja, darle esa posibilidad de siempre estar ayudando a la gente. Esa es nuestra comunidad, la comunidad hispana, la comunidad de la esperanza. Y quiero aprovechar para hacer una pequeña corrección, le pedí permiso a la cónsul, nosotros… Somos la primera minoría en Wisconsin, ¿sí? somos la primera minoría y eso obviamente queremos que siempre tengamos en cuenta para poder ayudar a los demás. Por último, eh, este premio también es de Luis, porque comenzamos con Luis hace muchos años la movida, cuando comenzamos en el debate y es tuyo también Luis, porque hemos ayudado en lo posible que se puede con la información, con los buenos deseos, es también parte de, de Tina que me ha dado la posibilidad de abrir las puertas para dedicarme a veces muchos minutos a la gente que necesita ayuda y obviamente hemos cambiado vidas todos los que estamos aquí. Gracias a todos por este premio y ese es de ustedes también, porque ustedes están ayudando a mucha gente. Gracias. So, back many, many, many years ago, Uh, back in 1997, I, uh, I, I served on the City of Madison's uh, Police and Fire Commission. That's the body that uh, hires, promotes, sometimes fires or disciplines uh, 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 police officers and, and firefighters. So as I was looking at the uh, profile of our next uh, award recipient, I thought, hmm, Did I hire him? Turns out I did. <laughs> the Amigo Award this year uh, goes to John J.P. Patterson. <laughs> And I think he's being represented. <laughs> I mean, call me crazy. But um, he is, of course, uh, assistant chief Uh, of the Madison uh, Police Department. I do recall him, <laughs> not necessarily from 1998, uh, but over the time that I did some work at the city of Madison, uh, especially you know, seeing uh, over the years the mark that he made uh, on the uh, Southside Precinct, very community-oriented or uh, policing uh, peace officer, and truly a credit to his profession and to the department. And that is why he is uh, the recipient of the Amigo Award. Hello, everyone. Yes, I am not uh, JP. Uh, I'm Matt Ty, one of the other assistant chiefs with the city of Madison. Uh, uh, John, unfortunately, um, is at a training in Arizona, so he could not be here today. Uh, he's extremely humbled and grateful to receive this uh, reward or award. And I would say 
Um, for those of you who know, John had every intention of being a high school Spanish teacher and was a, uh, a Spanish major at the University of Wisconsin, and uh, he, he, he took a different path, joined us with the police department, but he has had a long standing uh, passion, respect, and appreciation for our Hispanic community here in Madison, and he would like to humbly thank all of you for the hard work that you do to improve the lives of uh, community members here. And then this is uh, Detective Gracia Rodriguez, who has a few words to say as well. <laughs> Hola, buenos, no sé si son días o tardes. Este, yo no sabía que hoy no iba a asistir nuestro assistant chief, este, pero me dijeron que podía dar unas palabras y creo que la mayoría de nosotros lo conocemos o lo hemos visto en eventos, actividades de departamento del, del departamento de la policía de Madison y de amigos en azul. Y algo que quería expresar con ustedes es este el agradecimiento a él, a su apoyo, a los oficiales que formamos parte de Amigos en Azul, ya son de parte del Departamento de la Policía de Madison y los otros departamentos que forman Amigos en Azul. Y mientras estaba viendo la lista de las personas que hoy están siendo reconocidas, me di cuenta que con todas estas personas o grupos hemos colaborado. Y gracias a ese apoyo, como el apoyo del Assistant Chief John Patterson, es que podemos hacer este trabajo. Por ejemplo, Nancy, que somos parte del Latino Community Engagement Team, gracias al apoyo de la oficina del Departamento de Policía de Madison, es que podemos ser parte de ese grupo y Nancy nos ha ayudado mucho. Este, igual, este, Carbon World Health, hicimos una colaboración, See It to Be It, cuando este, yo era parte del grupo de Community Outreach, Thank you for that partnership. Este, Alejandro, hemos hecho varios programas este, contigo en la radio, así que muchas gracias. Este, el Alder Janet Figueroa Col, este, nuestra asistencia cuando yo trabajaba en Allied, igual, este, muchas felicidades. Este, Fernando Cano, sé que nos hemos este, visto en varias ocasiones y ayudado este, con lo que necesita la comunidad. Y el Rainbow Project, Celia, este, igual toda la colaboración que hemos hecho con el Departamento de Policía de Madison y Amigos en Azul. Y es este, la importancia de reconocer a nuestros jefes que nos este, brindan este apoyo para que nosotros como oficiales por parte de ya sea Departamento de Madison o Amigos en Azul, podamos hacer este trabajo hacia nuestra comunidad. So, Chief, I know you're here and I said all that in Spanish, but I basically just wanted to thank um, our Assistant Chief John Patterson for his support. He's attended a lot of our events, our support to our outreach and our support to Amigos en Azul, so we are thankful for that. So I'm thankful for our Assistant Chief who could not be here today. Gracias. The Hispanic Achievement of the Year Award this year goes to Alder Janet Figueroa Cole. She was elected to the Madison City Council in 2021, and she is the council president and a proud Puerto Rican. Uh, she uh, has a background in business uh, process data analysis and system uh, integration, and that has pre truly has prepared her well to navigate the complex systems of local government. She uh, currently serves on very important committees, including for the City of Madison, the Finance Committee that uh, controls the purse strings uh, with, of course, the mayor's uh, <clears throat> uh, collaboration uh, of the city, uh, Parks Commission, Board of uh, Public Health, the room tax. So. Uh, she uh, has risen and uh, made her mark uh, in the city of Madison uh, as an alder and in our community as a leader. So the Hispanic Achievement Award is to Alder Janet Figueroa Cole. Hola, and thank you all for being here. Thank you to La, to La Movida for the recognition during the Hispanic Heritage Month. I want to recognize the significance of Madison having the first Latina council president. It's way overdue, there's a lot of us in the city, and many other people should have that opportunity to represent us. I hope moments like these are opportunities for the Latino to be, find inspiration and desire to run for office. It has been an honor to 
serve the city of Madison. It is a difficult job at times, but it's also very rewarding. I want to congratulate everyone else who, has rec who was recognized today, but especially my friends and colleagues, John Patterson and Nancy Saiz. My journey to Madison began in 1991, and my sisters soon followed. They're sitting back there somewhere. Together, we grew up and raised our families here in Madison, and their commitment and service to the community has been a source of inspiration. They had joined Madison's Latine pop population for decades, sharing their talent and passion. So I thank you both, both for that. I am grateful to many of you who have supported me, especially during the last the past three and a half years. Your support has not, been, has not gone unnoticed and has impacted my role, my role as an elder. Last year, after being elected council vice president, Juan Jose Lopez texted me. His health was deteriorating, but he couldn't help himself. He called late that night to reaffirm how proud he was. Because titles are insignificant to me, if you know me, I didn't quite understand his excitement. I usually gave him a hard time when we spoke, but he was so emotional that I just quietly listened and as he talked about the importance of Latine in elected office. Juan Jose and I were often on different pages, but we agree on the importance of having a seat at the table. I want to honor his memory at this moment by stressing our crucial role in democracy. Your vote is not just a right, it's a responsibility. Your voice matters and every vote counts. Our collective responsibility is to engage in the democratic process and advocate for the issues that affect our, brown, our black and brown people. We must continue to uplift one another by embracing our diverse cultural backgrounds and ensuring our stories and voices are heard. Take the opportunity to make an impact, run for office, take space at the decision-making table, and pave the way for future generations. Thank you again to Lupita and Luis for the, from La Movida for this recognition and your support and dedication to our community. For the rest of you, vote, vote, vote. Thank you. Uh, uh, certainly a timely reminder. The uh, Community Leader of the Year this year is Fernando Cano Ospina. <laughs> he has made his mark both in Costa Rica and also here uh, in uh, delivering mental health uh, care. Uh, for 20 years at Mendota Mental Health, and now more recently uh, through uh, Rice, Wisconsin, where he serves as Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director. Just give it up for Fernando Cano Ospina. Oh my God. Uh, I actually wasn't going to say anything, so I don't know what to say now. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I think I will start saying gracias uh, a, a mi mami, um, porque ella fue la primera que me puso esa idea de, de ayudar, la idea de que, de que si puedes ayudar, tienes que hacerlo. Um, so gracias a ella, y, y estoy pensando en ella que está en Costa Rica, y a mi hermano también. Um, I also want to say thank you to my wife, Stephanie, who many of you know. Uh, who is an inspiration for me every day. Uh, you know, sometimes I get these recognitions and, and, uh, and I'm in all these groups and, and I think about what she does every single day with the families, working at, with the families in their houses and she, she's the one that should be, uh, should be here. So thank you, love you. Um, I also wanna say thank you to all my friends and women leaders. I think that I learn from you every single day um, as a Latino man, it is important for you to surround yourself with women and listen and learn from them. And uh, 
and then tell other Latino men to do the same. <laughs> uh, see, see. <laughs> uh, so, Chiva, Patricia, um, you guys are amazing. Brenda, all of you, uh, Karen, all of you that that I had the pleasure to work with in this community for so many years and continuing to help the community. Um, when I came in 20 something years ago, um, I met uh, Juan Jose and then I met Lucia. And, um, and it's tough not to have them. They are, they are people that inspire me. They are people who um, make me think and say to myself, would I be there, would I be able to do what they're doing? Can I do what they do? And yes, sometimes I disagree with Juan Jose and some things, he, he had some of those things. And Oscar and others, sometimes I, I disagree, and, and, but we, we love each other, we work with one another, we are a family, we are that inspiration that uh, Alejandro said. So it is a, it's an honor to get this award, it's an honor to share it with all of you. Thank you so much, thank you to Lupita and Luis and all the hours in the radio and everything that you do and uh, yeah, si se puede. Gracias. Last but certainly not least, the Community Institution of the Year Award goes to the Rainbow Project. Founded in 1980, it, it has made it its mission to address unmet needs of children, primarily those who have experienced uh, trauma. Um, they provide uh, evidence-based prevention, treatment, and crisis uh, intervention. Rainbow Project also puts on one of the premier <laughs> Uh, Latin dance events uh, in, in the state of Wisconsin, Rumba for Rainbow. Uh, but, and we'll let uh, Cheryl Cato speak on behalf of the Rainbow Project. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, hello everyone and thank you so much. I was sounding so inarticulate in my mind at the table, but don't have that right now. Um, one of the things that Juan Lopez had told me, uh, and uh, he said, I have something important to tell you. And I got some note paper to take notes. And he said, you know, and I sat down quietly. He said, I think that you were reincarnated as a Latina. <laughs> and that was one of the best compliments that I have, but I am just proud here because my tia, uh, mi tia, uh, Carmen Shabella Salinas, would be very proud of me. Um, but I wanted to just quickly say that we all have passion and dreams about what, um, after 44 years of service in this community, the Rainbow Project has served over 24,000 children and families. And you have these lofty dreams and passions the best practice, no, I'd say excellent practice that you want to have in service, but the key is having the wisdom and the gifts of the therapists and staff who then are able to really carry that out to human beings, and that is not easy. And I will just say for decision makers, funders, policy makers, we're not just all the same in terms of mental health. And I think that we need to know the differences that are out there. And I say that the giftedness of Monica and Jonathan and Celia is what makes all of us want to rise better. Uh, we say diversity, we say equity, inclusion. It is in our bones and we have a long ways to go. But I really am so proud of what everyone is doing, including all of the staff, because we all use interpreters as well. And so we're better than ever as a whole organization that we hope everyone will be able to do. But that wisdom and that motive comes from the very beginning 44 years ago when Shiva Bidar Silov and Brenda Gonzalez and Fabiola, um, their wisdom and help makes us inspire more uh, to do better, and so I thank you so much. Do either of you want to say anything? Oh. <laughs> well, I think you, you pretty much said it all. Thank you, thank you. 
Yeah, um, no, I just also wanted to, to say that this work is not possible without working with other community programs. This requires teamwork. Um, so I want to say thank you to Unidos for their collaboration to, again, Fabiola, Shiva, Teresa, without whom we could not do this. Also, thank you, Amigos en Azul, Fernando, and I, I, you know, just the, the list is endless. So th thanks, everybody. Well, um, that is all for the awards. Uh, well, it is time now for me to uh, cede the podium uh, to, to Luis, maybe Lupita as well, who have some closing uh, final thoughts for you. Buenas tardes para todos ustedes. Primero quiero reconocer, first of all, I want to recognize Mario Mendoza. I want to ask for a big round of applause for Mario. Where are you, Mario? Ah, ya está ya. Oh, sorry. Thank you much, Mario uh, Mendoza, for all his uh, contributions, his help that he's done for, the, for this event and for many other things to the station through the years. Muchas gracias y, y gracias a Mario. Um, when I started coming up, Lupita says, ¿Qué vas a decir? <laughs> Should I say it all? ¿Qué vas a decir, gordo? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Pero, um, um, last year we did a recognition for Juan Jose Lopez. And um, it, it feels good to know that it wasn't just me that had different differences with Juan. <laughs> and he was very outspoken, which is good. Which is good. Uh, I, you know, he was a friend. Um, should I say this or not? Every time I saw Juan Jose Lopez, now I, I gotta go there. Um, every time I would say I would see Juan Jose Lopez. How about them Cowboys? Oh, after, after last night, after yesterday's loss, it feels it feels harsh. But you know. <laughs> The, the other thing that we would talk about was San Antonio. You know, I went to Holmes High School. He was from downtown, you know, también San Antonio. I think he went to Lanier, right? Ah. So, and now um, we lost our friend Lucia. Um, I, I vividly rem remember when she called us and she wanted to meet with us and um, at the uh, old Centro Hispano. Uh, well, on what was that street? Um, no, not Badger. Um, Mifflin. On Mifflin Street. She says, uh, back on Mifflin, back, it was 24 years ago, 20, almost 25 years ago. And um, Lucia was an amazing person. Um, she was like our older sister, and one of the first things she said was, Thank you for what you're doing, and I'm here to help. What do you need? Que necesitan? And um, When we first started, you know, right now, gracias a Dios, hem, eh, hemos trabajado bastante y, y es, nos acompañan ustedes. You guys are with us today. But back then, Luis and Lupita, 25 years ago, it, it, it's not like today, I can assure you that. It's been a lot of work, a lot of headaches, um, big salt pills like that. But let me tell you, Lucia, was one of our first supporters, big time. And that's how important she was to us. So every time we saw her, I saw her a couple of months ago at Centro Hispano. And you guys are aware that um, our oldest son, Louis, is going through cancer. And um, that's the first thing she asked. How's your son? Como esta? What's going on? How's he doing? And at the time, I, I did not know that she had she had relapsed, and um, a couple of weeks ago, I found out she was sick. And let me tell you, she will be missed. Um, she was she was a champion of many of us, and um, um, I think we need to name a building or an organization or something after her because she was very, very a powerful woman, a powerful woman. So, Lucia, gracias por todo.
that was absolutely true, Luis. Well, um, I just have, I think, a few words to say. Number one, uh, thank you, Midwest Family Medicine, for being our family for 22 years. And everybody that is here for joining us for the last 14 years celebrating the achievements and contributions of Latinos in Wisconsin through this luncheon. So next year is la quinceañera del almuerzo, so any ideas are welcome. When I go back and see the list of everybody that has been recognized for the last 14 years, it's just like amazing. But I still, like every year I said, it's, it's so hard for, for us and to see um, all the, the wonderful work that is being done in the community and just select seven awards, it's, believe me, it's, it's really a tough job. So please look out for me, because maybe one of you that haven't been recognized yet might be recognized ne next year. But congratulations, Nancy, Nestor and Ashley, Alejandro, JP, Janet, Fernando, and the Rainbow Project for being Today, our award recipients who are so proud of the work that you guys do, and I, I'm so happy to uh, work alongside to each and one of you. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, gracias a mis padres que están el día de hoy aquí, que cada, casi cada año nos acompañan. Por allá están Alfredo y Ernest, Ernestina. Desde Veracruz. <laughs> Un abrazo a mis hijos, que son, yo creo que mi motor y, y mi fuerza. My, my kids are my strength. Uh, Louis is doing much better. It's almost done with chemo. Thank you for all the support. When, when things like that happen, uh, it is amazing to see uh, how many wonderful friends and, and family are around us. And, and La Movida is all of you, and I appreciate that. Well, actually, April 30th, it was when La Movida was born, right? And April 30th, 2000, so... Um, El, Día del Niño. El Día del Niño in Mexico. So it's been uh, 24 years of La Movida, so next year is the, this is 25th, actually, anniversary of that La Movida was born a couple of hours on the weekends. And it's amazing that so many friends that join us for the very first time doing like a, a El Debate show that we do every single day now were part of that very first uh, program. And, and we're still here 20, 24 years uh, ago after 24 years. So thank you so very much. I also wanted to uh, thank um, Lieutenant Governor Rodriguez for being here, for making the time to join in us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ambassador uh, Franco, for being here, for taking that invitation. And thank you to all my colleagues and friends, Mayor Satya, Mayor, um, Arata Frata, and obviously my wonderful champs. Thank you, Jamie, for joining us and for, for being part of, of this uh, wonderful celebration. And obviously, all my beautiful and wonderful friends that are just right here and every there and all over for joining us. This is amazing. This is for you. And please support the luncheon. I have to do my self speech too, Randy, or I'm okay. Just kidding. <laughs> no, but if anybody is, is, is looking for be part of the luncheon next year, we're open spots. Wait, Luis, don't you say that you're already done? I got something to say before we end it. Um, I am so proud of her, if you guys don't know this, but Lupita's on the cover of Bravo magazine. So look for it. Oh, Luis. With Sandy, Sandy, my partner on, on the magazine. Oh, yeah, Sandy. <laughs> and also, um, through, through my career, I, I guess I, I just wanted to mention something. Uh, my very dear friend and colleague and um, a lady that um, has been essential and instrumental in my career, Michelle Verkine, I wanted to uh, acknowledge and um, appreciate all the, the hard work and collaboration and for all your support. And, all the wonderful, wonderful experiences I have been through the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. I really appreciate and I really um, appreciate the industry. It is hard, it is radio, radio works, radio is amazing. Please keep supporting radio, keep supporting the media, and please um, join us next year, 15th year anniversary. Thank you everyone for joining us. Muchísimas gracias, nos vemos el próximo año. Guys, if there is a media you can trust, it's radio. Arriba radio! Bye.
All right. Everybody. Muchas gracias, los queremos mucho y siguen escuchando la primera, la única, la movida. Mario, ¿se te olvidó? Donde sí la mueves.